Hello everybody and welcome. I've been asked questions about how to install Linux on the C8000. So I'm going to show this process today. To begin with, you're going to need a serial console. For some reason, the C8000 seems, my C8000 at least seems to be crashing when you get to the, uh, well, to the boot. So, but if you do a serial setup, it works. So here I'm using my Octane. You can see the serial cable is connected from the Octane. Um, well, first port is set as a remote console, so I'm using the second one here. And it's connected here to the back of my C8000, to the console port. And you're going to see that I removed the monitor key and keyboard and mouse because I don't want the system to boot into the graphics console. I'm going to do the installation via serial. From here you can launch CU pointing to the second port. So you use LTTYD2. And after running that, you can start your workstation. You see, you're going to start seeing the log messages coming in. But once the firmware hands over uh, control to the operating system, the console messages will disappear. You can see here that the keyboard check failed and that the system is complaining that there are no um, graphics console. So once you get to the firmware prompt, you can issue SIA to search for boot devices and you see here that I get a P0, P1 soon the CD-ROM is going to spin up and then also my network boot I have a small Linux installation that I can boot from the network for the C8000 now the interesting thing here that you're going to need to pay attention to if you look carefully P1 is the first SCSI disk and P0 is the second. So I'm doing the installation to P0 and that means that uh, in the partitioner you have to watch for SDB. If you pick SDA you're gonna install to the second hard to the first hard drive and override your HPX installation if that's what you have. So let's do boo p2 and we want to interact with the uh, bootloader so we're gonna mark yes and here the console port is gonna default for uh, 50, uh, 115 200 um, bps and we don't want that because uh, the SGI port is set to 9600. But for example, if you are using a PC using PuTTY, you can force it to 15200 and have a much faster installation. Let's go to 3 and console TTYS 0 uh, 9600. And let's do B to boot. Once you get the kernel rolling and the messages popping up, you should be good to go. The installer is going to ask for language. There is C and English. So let's go for English. I need more space, I guess, for the console. Let's make it a bit bigger. Um, I'm going to just mark here where I am, Czech Republic, but I don't think it really matters. So let's go for Europe. Scroll down to the Czech Republic. US is fine.
I don't know why, but uh, this install doesn't have the HCP, so you have to basically use this manually. Yeah? So just put an IP based on your network according to your needs. After configuring the network, you're going to be asked to create user accounts. Uh, you just proceed as a normal uh, Debian installation. There is nothing special here. The next, next step is to partition and the automatic partitioner is going to do a miserable job. So let's go manual. And remember, this order of disks here is the opposite from what you see on the firmware. So I'm picking up SDB. And I already have this partition, so I'm not going to do anything now, but I will show you how it is. Yeah, so if you go to no, um, you wait for the screen to reload and you will get, I have here four partition set. So let's go one by one. The first one here is going to be the partition for the Palo bootloader. So as you can see, it's set as Palo. I don't need a bootable flag. And I'm also not going to delete the data, but uh, if you would, the installer would install the Palo uh, in this partition. It works fine once uh, you have it set. So done. The second partition is going to be a boot partition. And there are two important things to keep in mind here. The Palo bootloader can only read EX2 partitions and they have to reside within the first two gigabytes of the disk or gigabytes how you say nowadays i think so here i'm gonna use this as ext2 you can format it no problem Mount point is going to be boot. And you are done. So let's go to done setting up the partition. The next one will be your data partition. So you're going to use it, it as ext4. You can format it and mount it as root. I know watching this terminal is very painful, it is for me as well. If you have a PC and can do it uh, 115, 200, your life is going to be much better and the installation process as well. You can flag it as, a, as bootable, I don't change this configuration, it seems to work anyway. So to summarize, we have a 49 megabytes or 50 megabytes uh, Palo partition. We have a 250 megabytes EX2 boot partition, a data partition, and I already have here 8 gigs of swap. But depending on the amount of RAM that you have, you may not even need that. Once you're done, you can finish partitioning and write change to disk. The installer is going to ask you for a confirmation. Well, you should confirm, absolutely. So mark yes. And the basic installation is gonna start running. After a while, you're gonna get the question asking if you want to use a network mirror. And as far as I know, every single one I used to use up to like six months ago is now down. So we're gonna go to no. And also the URL for checking the repository on the CD is also broken, so we can just ignore it. Here, I always, I'm usually against um, 
you know, telemetry and tracking. But in this case, I really want people to see that these old platforms are still in use by somebody. So we're going to do yes here to the package survey, but up to you, right? Now when it comes to software installation, I'm not going to do any desktop environment now and uh, just leave SSH server and the standard system utilities. We will add later on, we can add SID repository because I also cannot get the usual uh, PA risk repositories to work anymore, uh, but see it goes fine and well, I got my kernel completely broken at some point, but I'm hoping that they fix the problem. We will continue with that. And it's going to start installing the files from the CD. So now here is uh, the problem. Every time when you're installing, uh, MainDB configuration will get stuck. But if you kill the process, of course, man will still not be functional. And at some point, they just purge the man at the end. Um, but here, you just uh, will do Control A and two to call a shell then you do a ps and then grab man and this is gonna show you the problem right so we're gonna now kill this process 1174 and this will should be able to proceed so we do control a one to go back to the installer No, this hasn't happened the last time I installed it, but I think man got uh, stuck again. So let's do a grip man. Yeah, so let's kill now 3101. Let's see if that is enough. Yeah, exactly. So it was stuck again. The installer is going to finish and you'll be ready to reboot. Excellent. So now. Yeah, the computer is already restarting. Now here, as you can see, I can already go to the graphics console. I will disable boot now, so it doesn't go to HPUX. And when I do see the system will look up for boot devices. And now I will start from P0, and that's the second disk in the SCSI bus. Now it's enough for me to stop here, so I will do ball P0, and I will interact with the IPL. And what I always do here is, I will actually, you see TTY0, so I'm booting graphics, but if I go to 4, and you can do also cons console and you're gonna do TTY let's do S0 and we can do 9600 for now or actually if I need I will do another computer use another computer for the serial console but because it's gonna slow down my boot but uh, 15200 should be fine what happens here is I'm gonna get the graphics console but also in case I need to do some troubleshooting, I can quickly hook up a serial cable and see what's going on. Or operate my machine as a serial console uh, kind of thing. You confirm it. Then you do B. And at some point, you're going to lose the boot messages because the firmware will hand over the console to the to Linux, right? To the but the CPU driver is not up yet. You're going to see it happening very soon. Yeah, you see boot console B0 disabled. So that's the firmware uh, um, output. But the Radeon driver is not loaded yet. There we have it. So now we have the radio ruling the display, but of course without uh, 
acceleration. And we get the, your classic login prompt. So what I'm going to do here is configure SID as a source and update the kernel because at some point during my normal operation of this machine uh, there was a horrible bug in the kernel and the system would not boot up so I'm hoping that the problem has been fixed if not I will report it thanks for watching and I will see you next time